Okay, so let's solve another example. And this time, um, I still have the, my common source amplifier, but uh, instead of the resistive load that I had here, the RD, I've put this M2, which is another NMOS with the drain and gate connected to VDD, and uh, basically source connected to the V out. Let's see how the, let's actually calculate the gain and see how the gain is uh, being calculated. How does this small signal model looks like? And then, well, we're gonna answer this question of any benefits to this circuit. So as always, I start with a VN here, connected to a gap. I'm gonna call it VGS1. Uh, the source is connected to ground. And then I have GM1, VGS1. And then the drain also has an R0 connected to the source or to ground. Now the drain of this transistor is connected to the source of the transistor M2. So this is going to be the source. So therefore I'm going to have the gate VGS2 connected to VDD, which is ground in the AC analysis. And uh, there's a current source. I'm going to call it GM2 VGS2 going to the drain. And the drain to source I still have R0, R0 2. And let's call this one R0 1. The drain of this transistor is also connected to VDD, which is ground in the AC analysis, and that's it. That's the small signal model. So first, we need to actually figure out where to where is the R, where is the V out, the output point. Um, if you think about it, it's at the drain of the uh, M1 and source of M2, so that would be this point. So let's call that V out. Okay. How do I calculate V out? Well, I can write the KVL because it's not that simple anymore. Before, before I was just saying that V out is the voltage across this RO, and then I multiply the current through the RO, right? I can still say that, but uh, the current through the RO is not this GM VGS1 anymore. It's not only that anymore. There's a current coming from this side, which is VGM2 VGS2, and then also the current from ground to this V out, right? There's some current there because there's some voltage difference across that resistor. So we're going to uh, resort to KCL because, well, there are a bunch of currents here. So if I want to write KCL, I would say I have uh, I1, I2. Let's call this I3 and this one I4. I know that I1 plus I2 are going out of the node should be equal to I3 plus I4. Okay, that means that GM1, VGS1, and I know that VGS1 is V in, so I'm just going to replace that as V in, plus I2, which is V out divided by R01, is equal to I3, which is GM2, VGS2. Now, what can I write as VGS2? Well, VGS2 is defined as the voltage across this. That's negative V out, right? It's the VGS2 is defined as the voltage between this ground and this node, the V out node. Well, that's the opposite of definition of V out. So I'm going to write it as GM2 times negative V out. And I4 is basically 0 minus V out divided by RO2. So plus negative V out divided by RO2. Okay, so all I need to do is to have everything based on V in and V out because I'm assuming that R0, 1, R0, 2, GM2, and GM1 are calculated from my DC analysis. So if I simplify this, I'm going to get GM1, V in 1, or there's no V in 1, just V in, is equal to V out or negative V out times GM2 plus 1 over RO2, plus 1 over RO1. If I simplify this, I'm going to get to V out over VN being equal to 
GM1 or actually negative GM1 over GM2, RO2, RO1 plus RO2 plus RO1 over RO1, RO2. Okay, so I encourage you guys to actually try this and get to this fraction yourself. Now, looking at the numerator here, numerator of the denominator, uh, we can see that I have a term that has RO1 times RO2, and then I have RO1 and RO2 plus that. So I can imagine that this term, um, the big one, the first term on the left, is actually much bigger than the other two. So if I ignore the other two, then I'm going to have GM2 RO2 RO1 over RO2 RO1. Therefore, I can cancel these two with these two. And the answer is going to be basically, this will tell me that the gain is going to be simply negative GM1 over GM2. Now, if I replace these GMs with the actual size of actual expressions that I had for GM, you can rewrite this as 2 mu n c ox w over l. Uh, w1 over L1 ID root square over, well, there's a negative here, over, well, the same thing for second transistor. W2 over L2 ID. Now, the nice thing is that, well, mobility of electrons is the same for both of them, so it cancels. 2 and 2 cancel with each other. C ox cancel with each other. ID of the two transistors is the same because whatever current is coming here, coming down from M2 is going to go to M1. So the ID is actually cancel. So the gain is going to be simply the ratio of their geometry. So this is going to be equal to root square, well, negative root square of W1 over L1 over W2 over L2. So answering the question of any benefits, well, the benefit is that the gain of this amplifier is actually set by the geometry of the two devices. This tells me that any changes in the temperature, the process variation, the voltage supply variation, nothing is going to actually change the gain of this transistor. This is something that we actually like very much. Sometimes you don't want a lot of gain, but you want a really, really robust gain. And this transistor gives you one of the most uh, robust kind of gains that you can actually get because it only depends on the geometry. So like uh, once you actually set this length and width of the transistor, you're kind of setting the gain of the two transistors, uh, the gain of the circuit based on the geometry of the two transistors. Okay. So that's the interesting thing about it. And if you think about it, we can't really do this with BJTs. Like if I actually replace M1 and M2 with BJTs, I'm going to get it again if you do the analysis, you're going to get to this GM1 over GM2 ratio. But then GM for BJT, if you remember, for BJT, GM was IC over VT. Since the IC of the two transistors is the same and VT of the two transistors is the same, this ratio just becomes 1. So I can't really set the gain. The gain is always unity, and that's not really useful. It's not really an amplifier, and I don't have any control on the gain, so that's why we didn't do such a thing for BJT. Um, I left a big gap at the bottom of the slide because I want to talk about another way of looking at this circuit. You can look at this circuit in a way that, well, if I compare this with the normal circuit, I can say that a normal common source amplifier looked like this, right? I had an RD here. Source was to ground, and I had my V in here. So what I'm really doing is that I'm replacing this RD with this entire thing up here, right? So if I can actually find out what is the resistance of this M2 when we are looking at it, when it's seen from the source of M2, and replace that, and then replace RD with that resistance, I should get the same gain, right? So to do that, let's draw the small signal of M2, just M2. So I have 
gate source drain drain is connected to uh, basically there's a VGS 2 between them that gate is connected to VDD which is ground and drain to source I have this current source GM2 VGS2 and I have the R0 2 now if I want to know what is the resistance seen from this point above I'm going to connect it to a VX and IX the test voltages and figure out what is the relationship between the two right now if I do that I'm going to write the KCL here I'm going to say that um, IX going in plus GM2 what is VGS2 that's negative VX that's also going into the node oh by the way the drain is connected to VDD so ground again and uh, these two are coming to the node let's say this current is going out of the node so that's going to be equal to VX divided by R naught 2 okay so again if you simplify this you get to VX over IX being equal to R naught 2 over 1 plus GM2 R naught 2 and if I say that I can simply simplify this that I, I can say that GM2 R naught 2 is actually much greater than 1 so I can just ignore the 1 and then R naught 2 and R naught 2 cancel and I get 1 over GM2 right so my gain the gain of the circuit was what negative gain was equal to negative GM RD and now instead of RD I have 1 over GM2 well this is GM this is M1 so this is GM1 RD so therefore the gain is going to be equal to negative GM1 times 1 over GM2 so GM1 over GM2 that I have up here okay 